Ready? Okay, good morning. I'm Terrence Wall. I want to thank everyone for being here today. The Monmouth Regional Chamber of Commerce May 2023 Chambercast meeting. A fantastic uh, collection of folks that get together every month with fantastic speakers and great content. News you can use and take back to your, your family, your companies, and your friends. Uh, news that's, that's important and timely. You know, I, uh, it's interesting. Uh, Aging is our topic today, and aging healthy. And how do you know? How do you know when you're getting older, right? Um, well, for me, it was a letter in the mailbox. I don't know if anybody else got that same letter in the mailbox. I'll tell you, the first one I got, I shredded. The second one I got, I looked at to make sure there wasn't a typo. And the third one, I was got a little bit curious because it had a personalized card with my name on it. And then I looked at the logo, and I thought it was for one of one of the parents or somebody else or the neighbor. And then I saw the initials, and it wasn't the IRS. It was AARP. <laughs> Apparently, I was becoming eligible. So we all have our little notes that let us know. Maybe it's our knee or elbow, or maybe it's just, maybe it's just the, the graceful passage of time that we're all blessed to be a part of. Because to be able to wind through the arc of time and be on life's journey in a healthy, successful way for our friends, for our families, and for the future generations that we know and love, that's when you know you're truly, truly fortunate. And during that journey, it's also important that you think of yourself. By putting yourself first, you're then able to take care of other folks. And so many folks, and, and especially uh, women, don't take that time out sometimes to take care of themselves and do the different things that are so important so they can continue to drive forward their families generationally. So whether you're, you're 8 to 80 or beyond that, uh, my, my wife's uncle uh, lived to... 110, I believe. Uh, so it's, it's how, how do you get there and what are the, some of the things that we can do and think about now and in the future? So I want to thank everyone for being here today. Thank Ralph Zucker, the Inspire team at Somerset. I also want to thank our three sponsors, Artist Senior Living of Eatontown, AMRAMP, and Saran Jennings, Licensed Agent with New York Life. Our topic is senior health. It's retaining your youth and aging well. So today we have a fantastic guest lineup. Dr. Pam Aluri, Manager, Contracted Outpatient Services, Rehabilitation Wound Center, Sleep Center. Sleep is so critical. You're going to hear about that today. Joint Replacement for Hackensack Meridian Health. Michael Chavalino, the Executive Director of SCAN, the largest nonprofit, yes, largest nonprofit group in Monmouth and Ocean Counties. You're going to get great content today, folks. Please feel free to share it. We're streaming live on Facebook. If there's news that you think other folks can use, post it to your website, send it to your social media, and let people know, or send it to your family members that you think would benefit. Michael Chavalino is Executive Director of SCAN. It's, uh, they offer educational programming and resources for our seniors. And we also have Monmouth County Commissioner, 30-year healthcare industry executive, Sue Kiley. Uh, also former mayor and, and of, of Hazlitt, and she's been involved in so many different things. And of course, she's a registered nurse to boot, in addition to many other things. So we want to go around the room so you can introduce yourself so they know, uh, they, so our guests know who you are. And also, this is also part of fantastic networking, folks from different walks of life and different businesses through the Monmouth Regional Chamber of Commerce that's hosting this event. So Jeannie, if we can, uh, go around the room, and I'd like to start off with our three sponsors, Artist Senior Living of Eatontown, AMRAMP, and Saran Jennings. Thank you for sponsoring the coffee today. We appreciate that. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, what a great event. Thank you for putting this all together. So excited to sponsor this along with Artist Senior Living and AMRAMP. We all work very well together. It's awesome that we're all living longer but with living longer, there's more need for long-term care. And 70% of us in this room will need some type of long-term care in our lifetime after 65. And with that, um, it becomes more expensive. In 2030, it's expected that the, um, in the nursing home, it will double. The residents in the nursing home will double therefore impact the, the price again. And it's very expensive. There's been times where families have been depleted of their lifetime savings because they had to put a loved one in a nursing home or disrupt their life to take care of them. So if it's very important to you to not put that burden on your family, to not disrupt the family, to save your life savings and have choices as you age gracefully, then come see me. 
I have a sign-up sheet here. There is a Zoom meeting that you can go to and just ask questions and learn a little bit more about it. We can have a personal appointment or you can just ask me a question. But I look forward to be, being a resource for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saran. Good morning, everyone. Dina Coffey. I am with Artist Senior Living of Eatontown. I am the Director of Community Relations. We are an assisted living in Eatontown, right on the corner of Grant Avenue and Route 36. We are an assisted living, but our main focus is on those with Alzheimer's, dementia, all the memory issues. Um, and as my co-sponsors were just speaking of, it's, it's pricey. So um, what we have is a very boutique, type memory care community where we can just focus in on how to care for your loved one and make their day as successful as possible. So if you'd love to stop by and see our community just for that future planning, we'd love to have you. My card's here. I've got some brochures too. Again, my name is Dina Coffey and I'm with Artist Senior Living of Eatontown. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Jamie, I'm with AmRamp, and not only do we want you to age well, but we want you to age safely at home if possible. Everybody wants to try to maintain their existence in their own home, and at AmRamp we offer a variety of home accessibility products that help keep you safe at home. Our wheelchair ramps are able to be rented. We can install them quickly within just a few hours. We offer free home assessments. Our stair lifts can be rented also for those who are rehabbing on a short-term basis. It's very important these days to plan ahead. My partner over here at New York Life offers long-term care insurance, and that offers coverage for our products. So it's important to keep us in mind. Everybody always says it's not something I need, but you don't need it until you need it. So feel free to take a brochure, reach out to me at any time. My name is Jamie with AmRamp. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Debbie Otranto. I'm here with Reveal Image in Colts Neck. Um, obviously, we have to feel good inside, but we also have to look beautiful on the outside so that we could feel better for, you know, for ourselves. In Re at Reveal Image, we offer products like chemical peels, dermafills, injectables, microneedling, PDO threads, lifting, smoothing, and PRP treatments. When we look better, we feel better. Thank, Thank you very much. And so since we have such a nice crowd here, we're going to be very brief, just your name and your company, so we can, we're going to get right to our guest speakers. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, everyone. Tara Demianovich, Outside the Box Gift and Community Affairs and Resource Center. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Connor, and I'm an intern at Mammoth Regional Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Sherilyn Przlomski, Business Enhancement Services and Training. I'm a certified HR professional. Good morning, everyone. My name is Howard Stein. I'm the owner of Home Helpers. We service the Mammoth County area for all your personal care uh, needs, as well as companion care for your aging loved one. Thank you. And Howard is on the committee that helped plan this event today, right? The health committee, so thank you. Kathleen Hoffman, Administrative Assistant, Monmouth Regional Chamber of Commerce. Therese Rolke, Executive Director, Monmouth Regional Chamber of Commerce. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Carrie Kruskowski. I'm with The Connection, uh, Inc., a uh, managed IT serv security service provider, and most recently, the Managing Director of the eWomen Network of Central New Jersey. Yeah. Nice. Good morning, everyone. Valerie Ortense with Preferred Behavioral Health Group. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Roxanne Smith, Beacon of Life, federally funded program for seniors 55 and over of lower income. Thank you. Good morning. My name's Gogi Padilla. My company is AnswerSure. We're a phone scam prevention service. Excellent. Good morning, Denise Payne, Mammoth Health and Wellness. I'm a digital marketing agency. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm owner of Love Health. I help um, busy professionals like you to be well emotionally, physically, and be able to reach your goals faster. Uh, Laureen Andes, I'm with the Shackley Corporation. And just a side note, we have the only anti-aging product in the world called Vivix that was uh, manufactured through Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn. Good morning, John Crisofoli, Vice President, Senior Business Development Officer with First Commerce Bank. Thank you. Thank you. 
This is Ming. Everyone knows Ming, Ming right? From yeah, a shared Ming. universe. Oh. Woo, Ming. Shared podcast universe. Hi there, everybody. Uh, my name is Dennis McNamara. I'm the co-founder and financial planner of Wealth Advisors. This is W-H-E-A-L-T-H uh, in Red Bank, New Jersey. Now, briefly, I want to share. I, I ask this question about to everybody nowadays because looking at it and, and participating with intermittent fasting, I've been fascinated with this topic called autophagy. For anybody who hasn't heard or what this topic is, it's fascinating. Can you give us that brief definition so folks know what that, de- what that is? Because he's more a student of autophagy. Yeah, so uh, autophagy is a biological process where if you don't give your body any food, so you could still have black coffee, you could ha- still have green tea, liquids, your body after about 24 hours goes into a cellular process where it begins to burn zombie cells in your body. And you, I do quarterly, I have a group on my newsletter, clients of mine, we do quarterly 72 hour fasts so that our bodies can go into autophagy. We could burn up these zombie cells, which are the things that lead to aging. They're the things that cause disease, they cause cancers. Um, and it's just something that, we, uh, it was funny that you asked the question. I've never received the question before. Um, and I think more of us should just be aware that that exists. Thank you very much. Look up autophagy, which uh, it, yeah, we may talk about it a little bit today, but it's a fascinating word that I'm, I, I keep on out. Do you know anything about autophagy? He keeps talking about it. That's my husband. So my four kids are like, no one else is talking about Stop this. Stop talking about autophagy. I'm, we're going to listen. So, I'm going to make them listen yeah, to your so, comment there. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Russell Gartz, Collier Youth Services in uh, Morganville, New Jersey, uh, for 100 years, been serving the youth of Monmouth County for mental behavior health issues. Great organization. Paul Thurston of T Marketing, and I have been practicing autophagy since since February the sixth, and it has worked. Uh, I've lost about eighteen pounds. Wow! Congratulations. Testimonial right here. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm Riley Vandewatering. I'm a senior at Home High School, and I intern at Jersey Shore Geriatrics. Today, we're so glad you're here. Hi, I'm Mia Desaro. I'm a senior at Home High School as well, um, interning at GE Healthcare. Wonderful, thank Great you. Great to be here. Hi, everybody. Irene from Irene Kesselman Photography here in Homedale, your portrait pro for all your portrait needs. Thank you. Good morning. Vicki Hurley Schubert, assisting Hands Home Care. We provide care, everything from 24 hours to full live ins to keep you safe at home. We are a VA-approved provider, and we also provide direct support professionals under Medicaid for those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Welcome. Nicole Policia with Monmouth County Government. Lucille Madlena, I'm an executive coach for Leaders in Transition. Thank you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Al Aloisi. In the famous, insurance. ubiquitous, <laughs> Al Aloisi. insurance broker. I also sell long-term care and uh, health insurance. I'm also a senior uh, analyst for Medicare. I'm a Medicare specialist as well for senior citizens. Uh, by the way, I sold a Medicare Advantage plan to my oldest son. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm um, Brian Long. I'm uh, executive director with Complete Care at Homedale, formerly the Willows Senior Living of Homedale. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. <coughs> Linda Sirico, Comfort Keepers in Home Care. Um, we also take long term policies. Thanks, Al. We're celebrating 25 years this year in the industry. So we are not an overnight company. We're quite. Uh, rehearsed and studied (laughs) in doing home care. I want to just say autophagy is a big subject in my home as well. My husband is a big fan, but he's very thin anyway, so. (laughs) And I wanted to mention, you you have big news, so announce your ribbon cutting tomorrow. Uh, So we have been uh, in the Homedale community for 24 years, uh, known as the Willows Senior Living of Homedale. We were just purchased by Complete Care and tomorrow at our, uh, at our little, um, our beautiful building right on the um, Bayshore Hospital campus, we're doing a ribbon cutting to welcome Complete Care at 2 o'clock. And please feel free to stop by. Congratulations. 
Good morning, everyone. My name's Angela Ashley, and I'm with Infinite Care, and we are going to be Red Bank Center for Rehabilitation and Healing. And I actually brought a guest today, my friend Andrew, who will be doing grief counseling support in our building coming up next month. Thank you, Angela. Um, good morning, everyone. Anju Puri. Um, by profession, I have been in financial industry for about 30 years. I left that to pursue um, my own passions, which is helping the communities. Um, I am a life coach, and um, many healing modalities had come to me that I want to bring back to the community. As Angela said, grief support is something, because a lot of my transformations happen through a long journey of grief. So I want to educate people. I'm also a corporate trainer, but look forward to meeting many of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, Melissa Megan with Affinity Care Hospice, and thank you for having me. I'm Jeannie Wall, the owner of Tap Into for Holmdale, Colts Neck, Middletown, Hazlitt, and Keyport. A wonderful um, platform for marketing, public relations, community relations. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, often we're hearing things, but perhaps not taking the time to listen. So. Really listen to what you're hearing today and take it with you because I, I'm highly confident you're going to appreciate being here today. So let's get started. I want to give a little bit of a, a more detailed bio and then we're going to dive into some questions and learn some great things. Dr. Pam Mallory is with us here today. Pam's a mom, wife, daughter, travel junkie, best place Switzerland. You're going to talk more about that. And lifelong learner. She manages several outpatient and inpatient businesses at Bayshore Medical Center. She has a unique perspective on life, love, and growth due to her life experiences and her work in the hospital for the past quarter century. She has the luxury of learning from the many centenarians that she comes across in the hospital. The folks are we're bending the age curve, so it's, it's changing dramatically, and isn't that a wonderful thing? Pam has her master's in health administration and doctorate in physical therapy. She presented several lectures at NJHA, New Jersey Hospital Association, correct? Yeah. And is a certified volunteer advocate for the institutionalized elderly. Pam believes that the collaboration of mind, body, and soul and taking care of each is the key to keeping healthy and aging well. Thank you for being here. Monmouth County Commissioner Sue Kiley is with us. Uh, Sue Kiley is serving her second three-year term on the Monmouth County Board of County Commissioners. She also served as Deputy Director in the past as well. She's the Board Liaison to Health and Human Services Department. There are tremendous assets in the county for yourselves or your loved ones. Um, and many folks are not as aware of some of them, so you're going to learn about them today. Other areas, the Division of Mental Health and Addiction Services works with the Division of Planning and Contracting for Human Services and the Division of Social Services. Sue leads the Mammoth Acts Program, which you'll hear about today, which is an innovative public-private partnership. It's the first of its kind in New Jersey to better the quality of life for Mammoth County residents that are in need of services. Sue retired from a successful 30-year career in the healthcare industry before entering the political arena, policy arena, right? First as a registered nurse, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and on her background in healthcare sales, she's going to bring that to us today. So thank you very much for being here. Mike Ch Chavalino, podcast director extraordinaire. Mike is the executive director of SCAN, Senior Citizen Network. If you haven't watched this podcast, please do. SCAN does a fantastic podcast. Catch up on your sleep. It's Watch a non We're going to learn about that in a moment. A nonprofit founded in 1988, dedicated to helping people 55 and older, check your mailbox, to stay healthy, active, and connected in mind, body, and spirit. Mike is also an aspiring author, speaker, musician, and most importantly, Mike is dad to teenage triplets. He's worked 30 years in the marketing and advertising industry, learning from the ground up on Madison Avenue before opening his own agency, Shore Creative Group, in 2008. Mike's first book, Super Parent, is due out in 2024. Yes, congratulations. Look for it. The book chronicles his life as a special needs dad, offering insight, stories, and advice on how parents of special needs children can break free from fear, feeling overwhelmed and anxiety, and learning how to live their best lives. Mike's message to his readers for that book is having a, that having a special needs child is, is not a detour. It is the life you were meant to live. All the best on your book. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. We look forward to reading it. So what, I, what I'd like to start with, if, if, we, if you don't mind, everyone, uh, you know, you went to bed last night, right? right on time, as always, with no distraction. Doctor, can you help us uh, un unravel the, the, the sleep maze and how critical it is to your, your body, uh, your life, your day, your world, and what we can do better uh, in that regard? If you could start sharing right on that. Yep. Thank you. So I think on your tables, is it working? Yeah. On your tables, you have a sheet, and there's a quiz that I want you guys to take. It's called the Star Bank Quiz. Well, take it at your leisure. I'm not going to grade you today. 
So take it at your leisure. So why is sleep key, right? If you don't sleep well, you're groggy in the morning, you're tired, and you're unhappy, and you're snappy, right? So the key really is to get a good night's sleep. Now how do we get good night's sleep? A lot of factors go into that, a lot of factors. So that's a very loaded question. But what I'm going to say is, you know, you go to bed relaxed, right? No devices, no iPhones, no TVs. Well, some people fall asleep to TV, that's what they tell me. I don't know how deep they sleep, but none of the devices, calm mind, meditate five to 10 minutes before you go to bed, right? Then you might get a good sleep, right? And the other thing you want to do is leave all your problems outside your bedroom. Easier said than done. That's a holistic way of explaining sleep. So at Bayshore Medical Center, I manage the sleep department, and I've had the luxury of talking to many patients, physicians, and general population. And when I talk to general population, they're like, well, I snore all the time. It doesn't make a difference. Then I ask the wives, does it make a difference? They say, yes. We kick them out of the bed how many times a week, right? So I hope that he stops snoring, right? Now, why do people snore? Several reasons. Again, if I start talking about it, I'm going to take the whole podcast, right? The key thing you want to do is to see whether you have a sleep problem. So I have the questionnaire there that I have that's called the stop bank, very general. You can give you the questions. If your score is greater than three, you might have a problem with sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is very different than insomnia, totally, totally different. Sleep apnea has a mechanical cause. Insomnia is more mind, body, as well as could be a mechanical cause too, right? So you really want to take the questionnaire, talk to your doctor, bring it to your doctor, talk to your doctor about what you can do. One statistic, so American Academy of Sleep Medicine recently conducted a study, and they found that people who suffer from insomnia lose about 2.3 to 2.5 years. I think, don't quote me on that, it's the ballpark that they gave of lifetime, lifespan. So you really, if you want to age well, you really want to sleep well, right? So how much sleep do we need? Um, some people say, I work great on five hours sleep, I don't need any more sleep, or what? Is it just general guidance, right. medical? So I would say seven to eight hours of sleep is great. Talk to my husband, I've known the man for 36 years, been married for 36 years. Five hours of sleep. Goes to bed at 12, wakes up at five, as fresh as can be. He's an IT guy, you know, IT geek, always, you know, working on his problems. He works, used to work globally across different time zones. Did great. Me, if I don't get seven hours at least, I'm a little cranky. I don't feel great. So ideally, every adult needs seven to eight hours of sleep a day, right? Now, talking of that, I love your initiative at the Homedale High School seniors. I was just reading the article, right? What happens changing start to, times. Changing start times, yep. You're changing start times. Who needs the most sleep? Teenagers, at least nine hours of sleep. And how many things, uh, hours do you think they get? Four, five. Got their logged into devices. Other than that, many of them are taking AP classes, home Dell. AP class are big, right? They're taking AP classes. How much homework do they get? Plus all the activities that they do. They then get home before eight o'clock. Then they're doing their homework. They don't go to bed before one or two in the night. They have to be up by six, run to the bus to catch the bus to get to school. So the school starts at 7.15, right, 7.15? Yeah, 7.15. So they are the kids that need more sleep. Their brains will be much more refreshed and they will actually perform better if they get a good night's sleep. Again, you know, there's one study that says sleep doesn't have to be cumulative, it can be added. You know, you don't have to sleep five hours straight, but I don't, I can't see it. I need my seven hours of sleep at least, you know. So ideally we hope change the start times across the United States will help the kids get better sleep. And if you have better sleep, you're well plugged into school, well plugged into your family, and you'll do well. And for the folks that, thank you, and for the folks that are trying to get, get, get their bearings on these topics and to get uh, more assistance, they have tremendous resources with, with Monmouth County. Uh, Commissioner Colley, can you go over some of the resources that folks have that they may not be aware of as sure. well? Sure. Um, you know, the key to Monmouth Acts, or, well, let me start from the beginning. When I came into the commissioner role, 
I had heard many people when I was a mayor in the town say, we just don't have enough resources for people that are really in need, whether it's a kid that has an addiction problem or somebody that's trying to you know, maneuver the system and really understand the benefits they could get. That, from that came Mammoth Acts, A-C-T-S, which means Assisting Communities Through Services. And basically what we did was we created a private-public partnership with all of the people that deliver the services in the communities. So behavioral health places, um, suicide prevention groups, senior citizen groups, I mean, you name it. And we created this very, very big network. And we made sure that everybody in the ne <coughs> network knew what everybody else does. So now, if you call into Mammoth Axe, and let's say you're a senior, and you say, I'm having a problem with X, Y, Z. The person that answers you on the phone is gonna walk you to the help you need. And if that's not the person that you should have been talking to, maybe there's another department, they will walk you there. So you have a personalized kind of guide to find the services that you need. And nine times out of 10, people need more than one service. You know, they're, they, they may have, they may be homeless. They may have an addiction problem. Um, they may have a behavioral health problem. And all of that comes together through Mammoth Acts. So it's been very successful. Um, as far as what services we provide, um, you know, it's, it's broad and vast. It's a long list, yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, as I said, people don't realize there's so much there, but there is. And if you get on the website, mammothacts.org, you're going to see a portal to get into all the different areas. With Mammoth Acts, we created um, uh, groups that we could dedicate to specific topics. So we have one group that does uh, early childhood development. We have one group that does Office on Aging. We have one group that does veterans, um, and so on and so forth. So we're concentrating on the specific needs in those hubs, we call them hubs, um, in those hubs so that we can bring to the table additional needs and additional information about what we're going to do about it. The last step in Mammoth Acts, I'm not talking too long, am I? We're good. The last stop in Mammoth Acts was um, to be able to track everything. You know, I mean, we've got all these great services and we've got people calling and how are we doing? How are we doing? Are we having an impact? So that was critical to us. So what we did then was we're creating um, a database network, so that, and it's a contact network. So if, if somebody calls in, and they, we walk them through the system, we get them to where they need to be, but then we follow up with them. You know, how did this work for you? Was there an issue? What was the issue? Um, so that we can always be getting better and better for the citizens of Monmouth County, because that's the key. We need to help as many of our citizens feel very good about the way they live, the information they have, and the services they have when they need them. You know, and Sue, it's a big county. So are, are yeah. there, like, with all the information out there, are there any tools or techniques that you use that you find helpful to have that energy to be powering through the county that, that, that have been effective for you, for example? Yeah, um, you know, we always, we put out, um, not podcasts, but we put out videos about the various services so that if somebody happens to be a TV person or knows how to access them, they can see that. Um, when we go out to different townships, which is something we try to do, and make a presentation, hopefully we have enough people there to pass the word. The other thing we do is um, we've expanded our network to inc include trusted advisors. Because when you think about it, you know, especially during COVID, there were people that all of a sudden had no job. Um, and they, they never had no job before. They were very successful people. And all of a sudden, they don't have a job. That's a little embarrassing to call, quote, social services. You know, the indication or the implication of that is not always good to someone that's doing very well. So we started this trusted advisor community, which is your pastor, you know, all the different people that you're going to talk to when you have an issue. Um, and we got them educated on what we do, how we do it, how to access the system. And that's working very well for us because they're in better connection with the people that really need that help. A lot of people are afraid to ask. 
Um, the other thing we did was we initiated a stigma-free environment. And we had um, schools sign the letters that say they were stigma-free, businesses, et cetera. And stigma-free means that you accept people for their weaknesses, their illnesses, and their diseases, including addiction, including you know, um, mental health. And accept them, accept those things as issues of the body. You know, I, I, I could tell somebody I have diabetes and we could talk for an hour and a half. What meds are you on? What do you do? How do you do it? You tell somebody you have mental health, they start slowly backing away from you. You know, and that's, that's not what we want. We want people to engage and help or be supportive. Yeah, and beyond that engagement, you know, you have, you have, we have three guests here and you think that perhaps they have their own individual roles, but really they don't operate in silos. There's an intersection with all of them, whether it's the, uh, the, the, the sponsors that are here today uh, sponsoring this event, or the nonprofits that work, or Hackensack Meridian Health and their team. Perhaps, Mike, you can speak to the, the, in, the intersection between the county services and SCAN and the nonprofit. Can you speak to that and some of the, some of the work that your organization is doing in collaboration with the, organiz the hospital organizations in the county so folks can age well and, and better and be more educated and informed? Sure, thank you, Terrence. Looks like Clark Kent, does he not? <laughs> you know, I'm not the only one who thinks this, right? That that's can't be the case. That's autophagy. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> anyway, good morning, everyone. Let me just first start by thanking the chamber for including us all uh, and allowing me to represent SCAN on this amazing panel today with my amazing colleagues here. I appreciate that very much. Uh, so the first thing I want to mention is uh, something that we have in the works right now, if I can talk about it. So there's a new, we're, we're creating something in partnership with the Monmouth County Office on Aging, with various other nonprofits, Monmouth and Ocean County, Family and Children's Services, uh, Caregiver Volunteers of Central Jersey, uh, many others, and SCAN, and we're creating an Aging in Place video series. So what this will be, folks, it'll be like this. There'll be 40 separate short videos, each about 15 minutes in length, each one dealing with a separate topic or issue that is important to seniors and that can help them age successfully in their homes. Why is that necessary? We did a survey of our 986 members, our SCAN members, and of all the issues that seniors face, and we face, I count myself among them proudly, uh, all the challenges, the number one is being able to stay in the home that we choose to live in for the rest of our days. So these videos are designed to help people achieve that goal and our, their topics are like transportation, education, food insecurity, caregiver help, uh, physicians that visit you, dentists that visit you. So all of those things we're putting together, that should be ready to launch in the fall and uh, we're super excited about that program. That's fantastic. And, um, I'd like you also to speak to, and also other guests here, if you'd like to speak to it, um, how often have we contacted friends and family? How often is, have we, ha, if there's somebody that, who we lost that we, that we weren't in touch with as much as we would want to be? Because everyone's so busy, you know? But this ties also to combating isolation and loneliness. And the data is coming out in, in, in a, a wave of data that loneliness is also directly tied to longevity and directly tied to the quality of life. Not just the, 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 the length of your life, the quality of your life. Um, the, uh, if we leave with any other uh, message, perhaps, is call your loved ones. Call that cousin. Call that uncle. Call your mom and dad if, if, you, if you're blessed that they're still here with us to say hello and shorten that time frame. Um, can you speak to uh, the, 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 the issue of loneliness as it relates to aging? And frankly, there are folks that are 20, 30, 40, et cetera, of all age groups that are, look at the schools. Look at the schools and social media, which I refer to as anti-social media, if you follow uh, my, 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 my view on that topic, I think it's frankly just destructive socially, but can you speak to isolation and loneliness and perhaps a tool or technique to combat that isolation that so many folks feel, especially uh, the, uh, the folks that are in their, in their later years? Michael, star Michael, oh, Sue, Sue, please. Yes, thanks. Um, you know, the, the most clear um, evidence of how people were lonely and how it was affecting their health was when we went through COVID. And so many seniors were, you know, kind of locked in their homes. Not only they were afraid to go out, 
you know, so they didn't have food, they didn't have resources. And what we did was develop a network of callers. And basically, these were people that called in, said, how are you doing today? Did you get your food? Is there anything else you need? So it became a contact that the seniors were very comfortable with and felt they looked forward to it every day. That's one way. Um, the other way is to really be observant because our kids are really struggling because of COVID and various things. Watch them. You know, what's going on? Is there a difference in their behavior? Is there a difference in where they talk? Is there a difference in where they hang out? You know, do they go in their bedrooms and lock the door and play on Facebook? So it's observation and it's engaging. Those are the two things that I would say are the most important. Thank you. Go, Mike. Sure. So um, at SCAN, we call our podcast the Senior Moments Podcast. And what we did with that, here's why we did that, folks. So we sort of took what was previously considered a derisive term. Oh, I'm having a senior moment. That person's having a senior moment. And we made it a moment of celebration, or at least tried to sort of flip that term on its head. And for seniors, it, you know, that could be just showing up maybe after a spouse has passed away or some sort of life change event. Uh, you've lost your job or you're retired uh, or you're living alone now suddenly. So coming out takes a hell of a lot of courage as we age. So a senior moment is showing up. It's taking a class. It's trying to learn a new skill. It's calling a friend. It's really taking any action like that that uh, sort of increases the space in which we, we live, which shrinks as we get older. Uh, so we sort of pride ourselves on that. It's also taking an inventory. Like, wh where am I right now? What's working well? What's working not so well? What, what's upcoming? It, you're so busy with life, but how busy are you really to not be able to take that moment out? Which ties to a, a, a topic I was, I was speaking with Dr. Lurie about, which is um, your, the collaboration of the mind, body, and soul. And what did you mean by that? We were speaking about that, that, that topic, a uh, very powerful topic. And uh, can, you, can, you, can you share what you mean yeah. by that and how they all work together? Yeah. So um, a pessimist, right, says you start aging the day you're born. Yes. Right? Yeah. So powerful. That's true. You know. But anyways, what I mean by collaboration of mind, body, and soul. To me, life is about balance. I think I'm a Libran. That's why I think I like balance. So life is about balance. So for you to age well, you have to have your mental faculties, your physical faculties, and your spiritual faculties. Right? What are mental faculties? Cognition. Right? Uh, well, one personal example that I can give you, my dad passed away last year from COVID. Very tough time for us in our life. My mom just came to visit me, you know, uh, she's with me right now, and I'm noticing that she's forgetting a few things. So a lot of it, is it grief, right? Is she coping well? And I do often have, you know, conversation with her. But she also, what she does is, she tries to turn on the channels on TV that she's not ever seen or comfortable with. I think that's her way of cognitively doing things. She keeps calling her friends, family. Yeah, that's her whole day. She goes out into the garden, tries to look at the flowers and see what kind of flowers they are. So that's her way of cognition, trying to develop her mental health. Other than that, she likes to look at puzzles. So which I'm glad she's doing, but I definitely did notice you know, change after my dad died. He was her project, that's what I always say. He was a project and now she has no project. So that's the mental piece. The physical piece, I'm a physical therapist. And one of the stats, I like to throw out stats as I educate my patients, your longevity is correlated to your femoral health. What's a femur? The femur is a long bone in the body that goes from the hip down to your knee. That's one of the longest bones. Why, what is femoral health? Is your femur strong, right? What happens when we get older? People slow down. They're not doing the same physical activity that they did years ago. So when you slow down, what happens? You're, you lose, start to lose your balance, right? Your agility, right? When somebody is calling you from the back, do you have the balance to kind of look back and answer them? Or do you fall over? That happens to a lot of seniors, right? They're walking down the grocery aisle and they tell you, well, I'm dizzy, it feels like things are coming towards me, or somebody calls them and they don't know how to con you know, control themselves from falling. 
right? So the femoral health, the strength of the femur helps, you know, with obviously balance. Uh, one other thing, I was listening to podcasts coming in. I love podcasts, by the way, so I'll probably be listening to yours because I think it's also a lot of good educational information and probably I'll share it with my patients. But I was listening to podcasts from Mind Valley and they were talking about, you know, to age well, you have to be rad. What do you mean by rad? Doing physical activities that challenge you. So the one stat that he threw out was that if you swim, swimming is a great exercise. It's non-weight bearing, right? It's peaceful. So, and if you swim every day, you could increase your lifespan by 2.5 years around that time, right? But if you ski, you can increase your lifespan by 10 years. Maybe that's the secret of Japanese, right? Japanese have one of the longest lifespans in the world. Okinawa, Japan, the longest centenarians. So going back to centenarians, in the hospital, I have this phrase. Whenever I hear anybody is 100, I hop on over and say, hey, how are you? What's the secret to your beauty? That's what I ask them. The answer I get, red wine, a glass of red wine, <laughs> olive oil, and hard work. Hard work never killed anybody. So when I was working at the institution before, I talked to this woman from Newark. She was over 100 years old. The first time she came to the hospital. So I asked her the same question, what's the secret to your beauty? She worked in a laundromat till she was 88 years old. And she said, I should have never given up my job. Ever since then, I noticed I'm not doing as well. But actually, she was phenomenal. She was walking up and down the hallways. She fell at home, and that's why I was called in to evaluate. So physical activity is key. And soul, right? You have to feed your soul. You don't need to do anything major to feed your soul. Helping people, picking up the phone, calling a friend, buying a cup of coffee for a person behind you, small acts of kindness that can feed the soul. I can go on for hours and hours, but I don't want to take the time from other panelists. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. I think we got to get your mother into SCAN. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> ScanNJ.org. Yeah. Sign up right online. There you go. <laughs> so you've met so many folks over the years with different backgrounds and different thought processes and things. Can you share your, your views on that, 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 uh, that triad, that mind-body-soul connection, how it interacts and intersects with each other for a healthy, beautiful, long life? You know, I got to tell you, you're right. I've met so many people. The one thing that cracks me up is when I hear people say, I hate getting old. I hate getting old. And I always say to them, consider the alternative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I always try as best I can, and I advise everybody else to have a positive attitude. You know, we have to realize that we are the only people that control our mind, our body, and our soul. It's us. So if we're failing, it's because we're not working hard enough at it. And I really believe that. And I think being positive and working hard, you know, getting out of your comfort zone is critical. And it'll serve you well. And it, like I said, optimistic. You know, you don't, uh, you don't worry about what might happen until it happens. Now you've got something to worry about. But a lot of people spend a lot of time worrying about what could be or what might be. And it just, it just drains your energy, and you've got to focus on the positive. Thank you. And it's all about perspective, isn't it? And when we get back to Mike, I just want a, a shout-out to the high school students that were here. When I was, yep, shout-out to you guys, you girls. Um, I remember sitting in the commons. I graduated home to high school. I was sitting in the commons, and some graduates came in that recently graduated and came back to see their teachers. And I was like, oh, my God, they are so old. I'm never going, I'm, once I graduate, I'm, I'm right, I'm, I'm gone, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And, I, and, and the beauty of that is that it's all perspective. Like when I mentioned that I, my, 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 my wake up call as, as it were, or, or message came, came in the mail, uh, there are folks that say, well, yeah, you were a pup because I got that letter 30 years ago. I got that letter 40 years ago. I remember, you know, that there's a little tongue in cheek, but it's true. It's all about perspective. Because I remember in high school saying, oh my God, these people are so old, I'm not coming back here. You know, I thought everything ended at 26, right? And so you, you, you see over time, and the folks that benefit from the information you're getting today, you see over the arc of time, it's where you are now. So Mike, can you chair, uh, before we open up for questions from, from folks here, and our, some, our guests can uh, stay a little bit after the podcast, um, the mind-body connection, the mind-body-soul connection, as it relates to the, 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 the hundreds, if not thousands, of folks that you work with uh, through your organization. 
Sure, thanks, Terrence. So uh, interesting that you both brought that point up because uh, we like to say at SCAN that we help keep seniors healthy, active, and connected, and here's the important part, in mind, body, and spirit. And so we break our year down into three semesters, not unlike a college or a university, and we design our classes within each of those semesters intentionally to speak to all of those different areas. So you have people who are 75 and 80 years old taking conversational Italian or line dancing or fencing. We had a um, collaboration with Atlantic Fencing last semester. Our seniors were down there and not fencing like, uh, you know, building fences. They were parrying and thrusting or whatever the hell you do. Uh, uh, we had a relationship with Long Branch Distillery and so our seniors went down there, they learned the art of craft cocktail making, toured the distillery, had a charcuterie board. That plays into staying healthy in mind, body, and spirit. You know, just because we're getting older doesn't mean we don't need to let go and socialize. In fact, we need to do that more. So our classes are really meant to speak to all of those areas. I appreciate you both bringing that up. Yeah, and really, it's whether you're, whether you're 15, 25, 35, 50, 70, 90, you're living, period, right? And so some of the things you're hearing, well, it, it, it's simply just a reminder. You're living. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that wonderful, right? Um, so I'd like to ask, before we open up to a couple questions, is first I want to make sure folks know how to reach, reach you, how to get in touch with you, website or contact information that you want to share, because this also streams live on Facebook and it'll be shared on social media, and please do share it because this is great information for, for folks. But what's the next big thing, you know? What's the next big thing, whether the county and your role, or uh, for you, and then also I'd like to, from, from Mike, and also perhaps in Hackensack, what's happening in, in sleep, what's the next big thing for you? So we'll start over there, sir. Um, first of all, I do not have a phone number to give you because I have a senior mind, <laughs> um, but we can actually make sure that you get it and put, send it out to everybody. But I do know the website, and that's monmouthacts.org, and that's got all the phone numbers you're going to need, all the departments you might need to be able to get to the people you want to talk to if you have issues or if you want to ask questions, whatever it may be. Um, I think our next big thing is an initiative creating this um, data warehouse with all the people that we interact with and evaluating how effective we were with them from their mouth, you know, not ours. And following up with them after a period of time if we haven't heard from them. How did it go? Did you go to the doctor? Do you need another appointment? That kind of thing. Because, you know, if we, if, you know, we get a one call, we tell them what to do and okay, bye. And that's that. No, it's not. You know, if you're caring for somebody, you need to make sure that they followed what they were supposed to do, or you followed up to tell them they have to do it. Um, so that's our next big thing, you know, is really diving into how we can follow up with people and understand what they're doing, and then measure our success. Thank you, and that's mammothacts.org? Yes. Okay, great, look it up. Michael. Well, thanks, Terrence. So uh, just quick 30 seconds on um, who I represent. The agency I work for is called SCAN, the Senior Citizens Activities Network. You can find us online at scannj.org. We put on free and low-cost programs, classes, and workshops for folks 50 and older at our headquarters in the basement of Mammoth Mall. Yes, we have 4,000 square feet of space in the basement of Mammoth Mall. If you didn't know that, it's not just for the shoplifters. You can actually come down there, take classes. So that's part of our business. The other part of our business is our Benefit Enrollment Center. So those folks are out in the field at low-income housing buildings. They're helping the neediest in Monmouth and Ocean County among us. They connect them to benefits folks didn't even know they were entitled to, such as Medicare or Medicaid, uh, food stamps or utility assistance. Perhaps a senior has come out of the hospital or has had dementia or has had COVID and they get home and their lights have been turned off. I can't tell you how many times We've heard those stories. So our specialists connect those folks at no cost to those benefits. We're able to do that through people just like you. Your corporate donations to us, uh, our grantors, um, like the county, <laughs> and, and many other private foundations that help us keep the lights on, 
keep our costs low or free and able to serve uh, even more seniors. So I just want to say how grateful I am for everybody's support here and giving us a chance to talk about our agency today. Thank you so much. Dr. Lurie. Uh, so you can reach me uh, by calling any department at Bayshore Medical Center and ask for Pam Lurie. Now, uh, you can reach me at 732-739-5955 and ask for Pam Lurie. I'm usually never at the phone, so I'm sure they'll pass the message on to me. So the next big thing at uh, Bayshore Medical Center, we have a new um, chief hospital executive, Caitlin Miller. She is very, very focused on doing concierge care for all the services as best as we can. Healthcare is very complicated, especially in a hospital system where we have multiple diagnoses, but that's what we are aiming for. Specifically in terms of sleep, we are trying to bring sleep medicine to the folks, into the communities. So we do a lot of community lectures for sleep. Other than that, we do screenings for sleep. The stop bank questionnaire that you have is one of the questionnaires that you can take and then go back to your doctor with that. Other than that, we have diversified the type of devices or the testing we offer. We offer what's called a watch pad test, which is a wearable device we mail to people's homes. And that happened because of COVID, right? During COVID, people couldn't leave homes, yet sleep was one of the worst things that happened during COVID. People could fall asleep, not just from anxiety, but they also at home, less physical activity. So we tailored the device, so we have something called WatchPad, which is a wearable sleep device for sleep testing. Other than that, the third party payers want people to have home testing before they even go to him lab, in lab testing. So we have home testing devices that you come to a center, pick them up, and then you know we have in lab testing. So we are trying to tailor the care to the needs of the patient. Other than that, we have you know wonderful panel of sleep physicians uh, who treat you know patients from all ages, actually from zero months to 100 plus. You know, so we do babies at Bayshore Medical Center, and that's one of the biggest population actually that's going in Monmouth County. We are seeing a lot of pediatrics. My rehabilitation center, the pediatric volume has doubled in the past couple of years. And there's a lot of need for pediatric therapists. Very happy to see a lot of young, you know, younger people move into the community. And you know, uh, obviously we need to provide services. So that's one thing we are focused on, looking at the communities and the services that we provide. I can go on and on and on about the service they provide, but. Well, thank you, you know, very much. And the Bayshore Medical Center and the Hackensack Marina Health Team are doing fantastic work as they've evolved uh, over the years. So. Um, I wanted to give a shout out before we start wrapping up, Artist Senior Living of Eatontown again, Amramp and Saran Jennings. Thank you so much for all the work they've done here. I know our commissioner may have a, diff a conflict that she has to attend to but in a moment, but if there's a question for the commissioner and, and then we have, our guests will be here a little bit afterwards as well. So do we have any questions that folks have? Any questions specifically for Sue Kiley? She needs to leave. I just want to oh, wait, Ann. Thank you. <laughs> I, I know that you're in Monmouth County. Are there any plans to expand into Ocean or Middlesex County for the AX program? Uh, you know, that's a great question because people hear about Monmouth AX and they say, how do, how do we get it, you know? Um, and we've talked about, can we train other counties? We talk a lot about what Monmouth AX is and we're willing to share the concepts and the ideas, but we stay within Monmouth County. We have it's consulted. It's a wonderful program. With, it yeah. really is a wonderful Thank program. you. It's the only one of its kind, and I believe everyone should have it. Okay. I want to thank you, Sue, for being here today. Sue Kiley, Commissioner of Monmouth County, really appreciate your time today. Uh, yes. Sorry I have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> and all of our guests. Are there any other, other questions? How about some, any more questions from the audience? What we, okay. Thank you. Hi. We have talked, we've talked here about seniors, and we've talked about teenagers. What about the group of between? Most of my clients from the 30s, they're trying to raise kids in this society. They're trying to get everything done. I put together a newsletter, a monthly newsletter on work-life integration. What, what services are available for that group in the county? Um, well, I'll just say this. From, all I can offer is from the SCAN perspective, where I come from. So uh, uh, to your point, 
a big issue that we see is this quote unquote sandwich generation, right? Which is many of us, we have aging adults and we, uh, who are parents or uh, you know, loved ones, relatives, and then we also have children who may be teenagers or college age or even younger in some cases. And so managing all of that, not just to mention managing uh, your own uh, mental well-being. Uh, so I think what uh, many of our folks who are in that situation do, they look to for places like SCAN or caregivers for their parents or respite care so that they can get off the grid uh, for a little bit, whether it's uh, to go to work or have a little balance in their lives. Thank you. You know, and, well, I'm going to have a question for you, but with the, 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 the next gen in the back, uh, thank you so much for being here from uh, Home to High School. I, pop, pop quiz for you. High school start times. A little bit later? Is it, is it on time? Is it a little too earlier? Are we on track, off track? What do you think? Statistically, Homedell is one of the earlier schools, but the data from most of the, the science journals is that it's not quite right, should be about 8.30. What do, what do you think? You're, you're an end user, right? Yes, um, we start at 7.21, and I think it's incredibly early. <laughs> um, I know a lot of friends who start at 8, 8.30, and I've never heard starting so early. So I think we'd benefit a lot if we started a little bit later. However, we do end the school year and end the school day a little earlier, which I think a lot of people benefit from. So it's like a give and take. Thank you for that input. Uh, yeah, I agree with Mia. It's pretty early, but I like ending at like two ten later, like earlier than having to end at like three thirty. But I'm just a morning person, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. Did you have any questions for the guests? Any questions? You're good? Okay, great. Welcome. So, so I have a question on sleep. Um, and airway is obviously a huge part of it. And being able to breathe, ideally nose breathing through night. Um, so I have two things for you. Do you have any discussions with patients, people that are suffering with this, about A, mouth taping at night, sleeping with tape on their mouth so that they force nasal breathing, and B, uh, blue light, so the light that emits from our devices, our cell phones, our tablets, our televisions, and how that kind of stimulates our body as though it's like the sun rising and makes getting a deeper sleep more difficult. Right. So these are the very common questions that we get. Uh, one of the innovative things, I think it's innovative, that Bayshore Medical Center and Hackensack Meridian did was bring in sleep navigators. These are the nurses that are trained and educated in sleep. So they do, so when they meet the patients, they do provide education. Mouth taping, we usually refer to the physicians. This is their wheelhouse, let them manage that. But definitely we talk about blue light and how to unplug. Like when I talked earlier about mind, body, and soul, you don't get great sleep if you're you know, watching your TV or your iPad, work on your iPad or a computer because your mind does not shut off. You need the shut off time, so we do talk about that, yes. And then going back to your question about the adults, like 30 population, what are we doing? So at Bayshore Medical Center, one of the things we are committed to is having evening appointments and weekend appointments. At least that's the part that we can you know, play. So one parent could watch the child while the other did all the testing. Yeah. So talking of physical peace, which I want to mention, taking care of yourself is not only loving yourself, but loving your family. So timely testing your mammograms, you know, all your physicals, you know, all those need to be done. So then they plug. And I would say if anybody has any questions about day taping, you can speak to my wife because for Memorial Day, she's got red, white, and blue <laughs> ready for me because I talk so much. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, thank you for that. Can we uh, take it home at Therese? Can we take it home at Therese, Mammoth Regional Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for being here. This was a fabulous panel, don't you agree? So thank you for your expertise and your knowledge and for sharing it with us. It, it doesn't matter how old you are, as you mentioned, we're all aging from birth, so this information is powerful. I also, um, I wanted to say that we are here every month, usually around the last Tuesday of the month, so put it on your calendar and make sure you're here because Jeannie and Terrence put together fabulous panels with great information. Let's give them a hand. Yay, thank you, Tracy. And how do folks, so, how do folks uh, get in touch with the, the Chamber of Commerce, Monmouth Regional, and, uh, and become a member? Yes, yes. And I want to give a shout out to Michael from SCAN. 
I have to because um, this is a beautiful thing. He came to an event. We met, we talked, they joined the chamber, and this relationship has exploded ever since. To the point, Sherilyn, where are you? Come over here. To the point where our Beacon of Excellence Awards, October 10th at uh, Jacques, 6, 6 p.m. I mean, August, August, sorry, sorry. August at uh, Jacques in Middletown. Uh, why don't you take it from here? Well, it just, I have the honor of picking an organization um, as the president for the Beacon of uh, Excellence Awards and SCAN when I met them. I just was so impacted by all that you do. So it was just such an easy, that's it. That's the organization. So I hope you all attend because... Can't thank just, you enough for that. Oh, I'm really welcome. grateful. Gosh, thank it's you. An, it's, I'm humbled. It's an honor. <laughs> thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So congratulations. It is so well earned. You guys do great programs there. And yes, I actually did join SCAN when I turned 50. <laughs> I also volunteered with their program, Take Control of Your Health, and I helped do that in the community uh, for SCAN. And uh, I'm so glad to be reconnected with you again. So thank you. Thank well, you. may the, the ripples in the pond of today's meeting bring you waves of success in the future. We thank everyone for being here today. You are a part of this organization. And we're so blessed to have you here in Bellworks, uh, the vision of Ralph Zucker and his team. Congratulations to everybody, and thank you very much for being here today. Take care. Uh, uh, yes.